weaknesses that all narcissists have but they don't want you to know, because it can make them die quickly. Hello, fellow enthusiasts of human psychology. The persona of Narcissus may seem impregnable, but in reality, it's a meticulously crafted facade. Picture the narcissist methodically constructing this illusion, akin to a high-stakes game of make-believe, striving to project an image of immaculacy and invincibility. Yet, beneath this polished exterior lies a truth incongruent with their grandiose narrative. For those navigating the journey of narcissistic abuse recovery, it's imperative to peer beyond the veneer and expose the vulnerabilities of these supposedly omnipotent individuals. Join me as we unravel the five Achilles heels common to all narcissists today. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell to stay abreast of my insights. To begin, narcissists harbor an underlying dread of inadequacy despite outward displays of omnipotence. Their relentless quest for validation serves as a desperate attempt to silence existential anxieties. Moreover, beneath the veneer of grandeur lies a persistent sense of unease, gnawing at their fragile self-esteem. Hindered by a deficit in empathy, narcissists become ensnared in their own web of deceit, rendering genuine connections elusive. Consequently, isolation becomes their self-imposed prison, exacerbating internal turmoil. Furthermore, their insatiable hunger for adulation renders them susceptible to manipulation by those feigning admiration. Finally, their fragile egos recoil at the slightest hint of criticism or perceived slight, often resulting in dramatic outbursts. By exposing these vulnerabilities, we gain deeper insights into narcissism and the intricacies of the human psyche. Understanding the fragility underlying their facade equips us to break free from the cycle of abuse and foster genuine healing. My first mistake, not reflecting on myself. Self-awareness stands as a cornerstone of human development. True advancement entails recognizing our inherent flaws and errors. However, narcissists, ensnared by delusion and denial, remain impervious to self-discovery. Their penchant for deflecting responsibility shields them from confronting their own shortcomings. Each misstep is attributed to external forces, absolving them of accountability and perpetuating a skewed perception of themselves as faultless beings untouched by human fallibility. Behind the veil of grandiosity and entitlement lies a profound emptiness. Their refusal to acknowledge mistakes stifles personal growth, rendering their existence stagnant and devoid of progress. Like trees deprived of nourishment, narcissists languish in a state of arrested development. Their foundation rests upon a narrative of victimhood, craving admiration, and the illusion of superiority while remaining bound by self-imposed limitations. The tragedy of narcissism lies not in their grandiosity, but in their immobilization. Lacking the humility to learn from their errors, they meander through life ensconced in self-delusion, perpetually chasing an elusive ideal of growth that remains forever beyond reach. To leave a narcissist trapped in this psychological quagmire ensures perpetual repetition, their grievances echoing ceaselessly like a broken record. Despite their entrenched situation, even the most resolute narcissist may be swayed by introspection. However, delving into the depths of the self entails confronting dormant shadows and unpalatable truths. Yet, for those courageous enough to embark on this journey, the rewards are boundless. Through facing their flaws and confronting their inner demons with bravery and commitment, narcissists undergo a profound transformation, emerging as humble pilgrims in search of enlightenment. It is through this arduous process that they come to embrace their imperfections as valuable scars upon their souls. Self-awareness becomes their guiding light, propelling them forward on a path of personal growth and redemption. Let us extend sympathy and empathy to the narcissist, rather than abandoning them to their plight. Beneath their bravado lies a wounded soul yearning for salvation. Though the road ahead may be fraught with challenges, the journey of self-discovery offers solace and renewal, even to the most reluctant of hearts. Second, they don't believe in teamwork and favor competition. 
Narcissists find themselves adrift amidst life's tumult, isolated by the fortress of their own ego. Their self-absorption serves as a barrier to collaboration, a fundamental aspect of personal and communal growth. Unlike the harmonious synergy of teamwork, narcissists remain solitary figures in collaborative environments, incapable of contributing to collective progress due to their myopic focus on self-gratification. Consider the intricate dance of co-parenting, where cooperation is not just beneficial but imperative for the well-being of all involved. Here, the narcissist's egocentricity poisons familial harmony, transforming parenting into a competition for popularity rather than a shared responsibility to nurture and protect. Their self-centeredness blinds them to their children's needs, sacrificing discipline and boundaries on the altar of their own desires. Consequently, relationships fracture, leaving behind a trail of broken spirits and wounded hearts. As children unwittingly become pawns in their parents' narcissistic games, every interaction becomes a battleground for dominance. Collaboration remains an alien concept to narcissists, incompatible with their ethos of self-aggrandizement. Their worldview, distorted by the prism of their ego, renders them oblivious to the needs of others, consumed instead by their insatiable thirst for victory. Driven by a relentless pursuit of triumph, narcissists resort to manipulation, gaslighting, and distortion of reality to cast their co-parent as the villain in their narrative. Yet, amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope persists. Narcissists' fleeting successes are built upon a foundation of lies and self-deception, leaving them perpetually unsatisfied and enslaved by their own egos. Let us stand against the tyranny of narcissistic ego and endeavor to cultivate relationships founded on respect and empathy. In this pursuit lies the promise of genuine connection and lasting fulfillment, free from the shackles of self-serving narcissism. Before we delve further, dear enthusiasts, I urge you to subscribe to Narcissist Exposed for a wealth of insightful discussions and reflections. By subscribing, you gain access to thought-provoking content covering introspection, personal growth, and resilience. Join our community of like-minded individuals committed to exploring human nature and pursuing a brighter future. Stay tuned to Narcissist Exposed for transformative insights and inspiring ideas. Third, they're bored and lose interest rapidly. Narcissists are driven by an insatiable sense of unfulfillment, akin to wanderers lost in a desolate desert, endlessly chasing fleeting mirages that vanish upon closer inspection. Their passions flicker like ephemeral shadows, leaving behind only a hollow echo of their presence. Rooted in a profound disconnection from themselves, narcissists remain estranged from the simple joys that bring solace to others. For them, contentment is an elusive specter, forever beyond their grasp. Consider their pursuit of material wealth. While others may find temporary pleasure in acquiring possessions, narcissists view such endeavors as hollow victories, incapable of filling the void within, no matter how many cars or homes they accumulate. It's akin to pouring water into a bottomless pit. Like flames scattered by the wind, their interests flicker and fade, their fervor shifting from one fleeting pleasure to the next in an unending cycle of pursuit. Their lives are a frenzied ballet of perpetual motion and change, yet beneath the surface lies a cavernous emptiness that no external stimulation can assuage. Why, then, do they relentlessly pursue novelty? The answer lies in the fleeting sensation of pleasure that accompanies each new acquisition or accomplishment. Like addicts chasing their next fix, narcissists crave approval and validation, seeking solace for their wounded egos in the transient highs of worldly success. Yet, despite their relentless pursuit, their inner void remains untouched, a silent testament to the hollow nature of their existence. Despite their frenetic pursuits, narcissists find themselves confined within the walls of their own making. Their relentless quest for fleeting pleasures fails to fill the void within, rendering their lives devoid of meaning and purpose. In their relentless pursuit of approval, they inadvertently sabotage relationships and thwart their own aspirations. 
To comprehend the weaknesses of narcissists, we must first recognize that their outward grandiosity conceals a wounded soul yearning for redemption. Understanding their vulnerabilities allows us to unravel the complexities of their psyche and extend the compassion and empathy they so desperately seek. A crucial initial step towards healing involves acknowledging and confronting their inner shadows while embracing self-awareness. As companions on this journey, we can work towards restoring what has been fractured and forging a path towards a brighter future founded on empathy, compassion, and mutual understanding. Fourth, their fear of embarrassment makes them stress over their looks and how others see them. The fear of humiliation drives individuals to meticulously monitor their appearance and behavior in social settings. This fear is particularly pronounced in narcissists who, despite projecting an air of confidence and invulnerability, are haunted by deep-seated shame and self-doubt. Beneath their facade of self-assurance lies a wellspring of insecurity that permeates their interactions and relationships. Narcissists recoil from the prospect of exposure, reacting defensively and with ferocious indignation to perceived threats of humiliation. Their hypersensitivity often manifests in disproportionate reactions to even the most innocuous comments, leaving others bewildered by their erratic behavior. In an effort to shield themselves from shame, narcissists construct elaborate personas characterized by traits of superiority, brilliance, and flawlessness. Yet, the maintenance of these facades exacts a heavy toll. Their relentless pursuit of preserving their illusion frequently culminates in the exploitation and manipulation of those closest to them. Victims may be objectified as mere instruments for bolstering the narcissist's public image, disregarding their emotional well-being in the process. Narcissistic parents, for instance, may instrumentalize their children or spouse to serve as props in their quest for validation and admiration from others. However, the repercussions of such objectification can inflict lasting psychological wounds. In their relentless quest to shield themselves from shame, narcissists sacrifice genuine human connection and empathy. Their fixation on image over interpersonal bonds perpetuates a cycle of manipulation and exploitation, eroding the foundations of authentic relationships. To disrupt this destructive pattern, it is imperative to comprehend the dynamics of narcissistic behavior and cultivate empathy and understanding in our interactions with others. Only through fostering genuine human connections can we break free from the grip of manipulation and exploitation. Fifth, addicts have addictive personalities. Narcissists' entire demeanor is fueled by addiction, propelled by an insatiable hunger for both social validation and material indulgence. Their unrelenting pursuit of approval drives them towards various forms of pleasure-seeking behavior, with some becoming ensnared in addictions to sex, wealth, or substances like drugs and alcohol. Their very survival hinges on external validation, rendering them more reliant on others than the average individual. Deep-seated fears of isolation and introspection compel this dependence, leading them to seek constant distractions to evade their inner turmoil, which they are incapable of confronting. Narcissists utilize external crutches to pacify their tumultuous emotions, despite their outward facade of control. Beneath the veneer of confidence lies a profound emotional immaturity, evident in their tendencies towards fits of fury and aggression. Like toddlers trapped in adult bodies, they incessantly pursue gratification, perpetuating a cycle of addiction where they continually switch stimuli in a futile attempt to fill the void within. This addictive cycle governs their every action, inhibiting self-awareness and impeding personal growth. Narcissists evade confronting their afflictions by deepening their addictions, prolonging their reliance and perpetual discontent. In essence, the ostensible invincibility of narcissists conceals a profound weakness. Despite their outward projection of confidence and superiority, they are plagued by deep-seated insecurities, driving them to relentlessly seek external validation and adoration. 
Trapped in a cycle of denial and self-deception, they shun accountability for their actions and recoil from the prospect of shame. In their ceaseless pursuit of approval, they manipulate and objectify others, often at the expense of their relationships. The inability of narcissists to cultivate genuine connections, their relentless pursuit of an unattainable perfection, and their propensity for manipulation and control serve as poignant reminders of human fragility. By acknowledging and embracing these vulnerabilities, we can begin to unravel the complexities of narcissism and cultivate understanding and compassion for its victims. Before we conclude, I urge you to subscribe to this channel and share this video. Awareness is crucial in navigating today's intricate world. Thank you for embarking on this exploration with me. Until we meet again, stay informed and mindful. Hey there fellow movie buffs. Welcome back to another thrilling flick. Before we dive into the heart of the matter, I'd like to extend a warm invitation for you to hit that subscribe or follow button and embark on this exhilarating journey of exploring our futures together. To all the new members joining my tribe of subscribers and followers, a hearty welcome. You're now part of our extended family and I'm delighted to have you on board. It's fantastic to see you returning and finding value in the content I share. Your time is truly appreciated. If you enjoy what you see, please consider showing your support by clicking the like button. It's our tribe's way of thriving here in the YouTube community. Today, let's delve into the fascinating world of narcissists and the whirlwind of emotions that ensue once you've bid them adieu. Indeed, the pain sets in the moment you walk away. So, without further ado, shall we dive right in. The curtain has fallen, and the act of parting ways has unfolded. Whether the breakup was initiated by you or the narcissist, the outcome remains the same. You've exited the stage. As I mentioned in a previous film, it seems you've now seized control of the narrative. It's as if you've snatched the spotlight and bolted like lightning. With you gone, let's unravel the aftermath, left in the hands of a certain comedic character attempting to navigate the fallout solo. All right, let's map out the journey of pain step by step, so you grasp the full spectrum of what's to come. Now, for those tuning in who've traversed this territory before, you might have caught wind of it through the grapevine, those so-called flying monkeys or other remnants of the narcissist's circle. That's where the ache first takes root. Those in close proximity to the narcissist have witnessed this cycle unfold repeatedly post your departure. They'll keep mum though, especially to family, masking the truth of the recurring pattern. They won't divulge that you're just one in a series of similar encounters, each ending the same way. Nope, that tippet of intel won't make it your way. So, the narcissist kicks into overdrive. The smear campaign was already in motion long before your exit strategy came into play. Now the focus shifts to their inner circle, now that you've commandeered the spotlight and made your exit. Allow me to channel the narcissist's perspective, imagining she's a woman, as I'm one myself, aiming to capture the essence of her likely narrative. In her shoes, she'd likely lament. I warned you from the get-go about her instability. I made it clear she was incessantly trying to assert control, always needing to be right. There were moments she'd begrudge my time with friends or my childhood pals. I mean, those friendships are decades old, and we've been tight-knit since we were kids. She always had her nose in my business, monitoring my every move. I'm a grown woman, for crying out loud. Hey guys, this narrative can resonate with you too. Some of these lines are probably echoes of what a female narcissist has uttered or would utter to her inner circle. You know, he never wanted me hanging out with my girlfriends, she claimed. It always seemed like he was suspicious thinking I was sneaking around or keeping secrets. He craved too much control. 
This is the script they're peddling to the flying monkeys. It's the tale they spin within their clique, and to anyone willing to lend an ear. This is their version of events. All right, gather round, folks, for those ready to listen to this jester, this caricature sporting a crown of ten. As one of our tribe aptly dubbed it, got to chuckle, but let's stay on track. This is the narrative they're weaving. Here's where the pain kicks in. But let's not forget, they've run this playbook many times, so they're pros at executing their scheme. Before they even started smearing your name, they were already seeing someone else on the side. But they're strategic about who they rope into believing your supposed bad rep, all right? They cherry-pick their audience, because they know once the breakup goes down, they'll need those people they've tainted your image with. These are the same folks who were vocal critics, with strong opinions when you were together. Think about it, they were essentially undermining you, my dear. Right from the start, they had their reservations about you, evident in how they treated you initially. In the beginning, they might have appeared friendly, showering you with compliments like, oh, she's so kind, so smart, so this, so that. They'd seek out those who were outspoken with their praise, saying things like, she's stunning, intelligent, and all around amazing. This all unfolded as the relationship, or as I prefer to call it, the addiction ship with the narcissist began to unravel, revealing nonsensical discrepancies. And gentlemen, my noble kings, you can easily flip the scenario and apply it to yourselves. So, they'd approach these individuals and sow seeds of doubt, launching a premeditated assault on your character. Essentially, they harboured negative sentiments about you long before the discard. If you invited them somewhere, they'd decline with excuses like, Sorry, we're tied up with other plans when in reality, they were actively participating in the smear campaign against you. They weren't genuinely occupied, they simply didn't want to be in your presence. They kept their distance because the narcissist had been feeding them lies and affirmations that aligned with their agenda. Always remember, a narcissist orchestrates every move with precision. Now let's revisit the topic of pain. Yes, they had already begun spreading falsehoods about you well before the breakup even occurred. Once the discard happened, they had to escalate their deceitful crusade hastily. Now, let me narrate what unfolded next. They reached out to the same individuals they had initially tainted your reputation with, maybe a sibling, perhaps your mother, or anyone else in their clique foolish enough to swallow their lies. They spun their tales to anyone in their inner circle, their close friends of any gender, or anyone willing to lend an ear. That's their target audience. They had a clear idea of who to approach, because when they introduced you to their circle, they would already knew who would harbour resentment towards you. Why? Because you shine too brightly, you exude wisdom, and your radiance is something they envy. Where there's one narcissist, there's usually another lurking in the shadows, regardless of what you believe. Moreover, they never held affection for you, darling. Right from the start, they harboured disdain towards you. They foresaw that their association with you would inevitably conclude, and this is where the agony commences. Who will foot the bill for their gas now? I said it before. Who will prepare their meals? Since you often rectified the narcissist's blunders, who will ensure the debts they left behind are settled. Granted, they hardly contributed anything substantial, yet you tolerated them out of love. I know this first hand, I've been there, done that. I even have a t-shirt to prove it. They're all critics, you see. The narcissist then turns to those who hold a grudge against them. They're primed to finish what they started, but wait, there's more. The smear campaign persists. Who will cover their gas expenses now? They'll have to rely on their new supply, which pales in comparison. Yes, I said it. And I mean it. 
The new, less capable supply that can't offer even a fraction of what you provided. And here's why. Within the mind of a narcissist lingers this notion that the grass is greener on the other side. As I've mentioned before, they remain oblivious to the dirt beneath the surface until they fit the turf. I wish they'd invested the effort to nurture their own patch of grass. Alas, the bitter reality is they lack the capability to do so. Their inherent selective ignorance, coupled with their disorder, renders them incapable. I stated it, and I stand by it, they cannot think clearly. When you encounter someone devoid of rational thought, rest assured, you've stumbled upon a true fool. You've exited the scene, assuming control of the power source, leaving them in the dust, my dear. Now the narcissist must turn to their minions, their flying monkeys, who now foot the bill for gas and prepare their meals. These flying monkeys will reach out to you, acting as proxies for the narcissist. The cycle of manipulation begins anew. They'll utter phrases like, Hey, how have you been? So and so filled us in on what transpired, and we think it's only fair to hash things out and possibly reconcile. After all, there are children involved, and perhaps some time apart for reflection is warranted. You might even contemplate returning to that chaotic scenario. I'm not buying it. To entertain the idea of reverting to the past. You might be engulfed in agony, feeling as though a fragment of your soul has been lost in the process. But here's a revelation. It's far preferable to endure the pain now and release it than to entertain the thought of returning to that chaos. Once you've moved forward, the pain sets in because the new supply fails to fulfill the narcissist's desires, falling short of meeting their needs. This deficiency is inevitable with the replacement, as their allure vanished the moment you exited the stage. While you were the primary source of sustenance, fulfilling all their whims, they indulged in leisure activities carefree, often without gainful employment, to contribute to the household's upkeep. You shouldered the burdens while they gallivanted, deceiving you while you toiled away, only to return home with a smile plastered on their face. What's happening now, my dear? The entourage and those trusty flying monkeys are scrambling to fill the void left by your absence. Yes, the calls will start trickling in, if they haven't already, urging you to engage in dialogue. What's your take? If the phone rings while you're tuned into this feature, let them know where you stand. Understand that I've closed the door on dialogues with someone who evidently holds no regard for my well-being. When you dissect the situation, it becomes apparent they never harbored genuine interest in you. Recognizing you were entangled with a calamitous figure, they chose silence. Why entertain their overtures now? All they seek is to alleviate their own burdens by shifting the blame back onto you. But you can keep that burden, it's yours to bear. I'm forging ahead with my life now that I've reclaimed control. Let them manage the pandemonium. They should handle it as they found it. Agreed. The pain commences now that I've moved forward. Let them grapple with the consequences and live with their choices because, let's face it, they showed no concern when you were suffering and airing grievances about their family's misconduct. Instead, they were too preoccupied relaying every word back to the narcissist. Now that you've progressed, let them grapple with the repercussions of their actions. Keep your distance, it's all part of the strategy. As I always advocate, crank it up to the max, stay attuned to your instincts and intuition, and elevate your energy and vibe. That's the key to steering clear of these individuals, crank up the volume. They aren't concerned about your well-being. Remember that the agony begins for them now that you've departed. Let that troop of flying monkeys and their newfound source of supply be their companions in suffering. It's a wrap. Before we wrap up this video, I want to remind everyone to stay blessed and favoured. Catch you in the next one. Before you go, 
Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed the content. Drop a comment below to share your thoughts or anecdotes. Feel free to spread the word by sharing this video with others if you believe it could benefit them. Lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to receive our latest content directly in your inbox. Thank you for your support, and we're committed to continuing to provide valuable insights. Stay resilient.